Cancer rates among rising are rising among young adults. Some patients are now being diagnosed in their 20s. 30s and 40s. This growing trend is causing researchers to re-examine the contributing factors across the age range. Dr. Jun Gong is an oncologist at Cedar sinai here to discuss the increase in early onset cancers. We're talking mainly millennials and as you said the millennial doctor is here to help us sort through all of this but why are we seeing this rise in cancer with people under 50? Yeah this is a great question. There's an alarming rise in what we call early onset or young onset cancer which is defined by people that are diagnosed with cancer under the age of 50 and it so happens that the millennial generation those born between 1981 up to 1996 are seeing the, the brunt of all these diagnoses of early onset cancers. I know, you know, obviously there's a lot of research and studies that need to be done to, to completely figure out what's going on, but it used to be that you were older when you got it or there was a genetic link to it. What other factors are you starting to see creep in? That's a great point. So older adults are still diagnosed with more cancers than young onset cancers. Okay. It's just the rise is alarming. Okay. Genetics does play I think a role, but maybe not the major contributor. There are still a lot of other changes that are happening. Changes in modern medicine, for example, changes in screening guidelines, the advances in diagnostics, and even lifestyle factors. Women may have kids at later ages, mm -hmm. lower numbers of kids, but there's a growing research interest in what we call environmental exposures. Oh. And this is because of what we call a birth cohort effect. Learned, we, we can learn from colorectal cancer, young onset colorectal cancer, for example. These patients born within a similar group period are experiencing a similar ex environmental exposure. And a lot of research is focusing on that, whether it's processed foods, mm. even changes in our work life balance, disruptions in our sleep cycle, circadian rhythms, a lot of shift work, a lot of overnights, and increasing digital access during the digital age could, could all be playing a role. Yeah, so that's when you say lifestyle fat, I mean, I wouldn't even think about that initially. You know, I mean, usually it's like, have a good diet, get some exercise, drink plenty of water, you know, those main things. But how can we change this since society has changed some of these environmental factors so much like work-life balance? Right. So I think until we really, the research really pins down some exact causes, I think all of us can do better in terms of prevention and in moderation, for example. So I always tell my patients, processed foods, some of the junk foods, fast foods, you want to, you want to cut those down. Take everything in moderation, not completely eliminating them out of your diet, but shouldn't be a part of your daily staple. Exercise is very important, sleep, good sleep hygiene. And also, I think what modern medicine can show us is that prevention with screening advances can also help prevent a lot of these early onset cancers. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you. You know, I know the guidelines have changed so much as, even as a woman, you know, it's get your mammogram at 40, at one time it was 45. So where are the screening guidelines and do you think they need to change? I, I do think that the medicine in the field as a, as a whole is recognizing that early onset cancers are a growing problem. So you're right, breast cancers at one point, the screening age for mammograms was 50, but wow. just in 2024, they've changed that to now 20 to, to 40. Same thing for colorectal cancers. Initially colonoscopies for the average risk individual was at age 50. Now it's changed down to 45. So I think there's a growing recognition that earlier screening may be a benefit in this population. Are those the two main cancers you're seeing in younger patients or what, what cancers are you seeing pop up? So that's a really great question. So recent data from the CDC s surveyed the, da the database and they actually showed that if you projected 2010 rates, you would get this expected rate. But in 2019, there was actually more than that. There were increased rates mm -hmm. and the, the top cancers were female breast cancer, about 4,800 additional cases, followed by colorectal cancer. And rounding up that list is kidney, uterine, and pancreas cancers. Mm -hmm. And actually, Female breast, colorectal, kidney, and uterine accounted for more than 80% of the increases wow. in young onset colorectal, uh, young onset cancers. Is there anything, are they related to one another in any way? So I think this, this collective effort to see what exposures are different with the millennial birth cohort, for example, which could be different from the exposures experienced by the baby boomer generation. Mm. I think it's focusing on what is exactly different from this group that they're experiencing. And there's a lot of hypotheses uh, that we talked about in terms of potential risk factors. Well, thank you so much for all you do, and thank you for coming in to explain this. I think it's such an important topic. Thank you for having me.